good morning everyone it's tuesday it's the 30th of november is it no it's the 29th it's the 29th oh i almost i almost took a day away from us that would be so sad so it's the 29th of november it is chat with chap and i'm your host ginger wade i'm so glad you're with me today uh today is q a day and we have lots of topics that we're going to discuss today so Thank you for tuning in. I'm very glad that you're here with us today, and let's just jump right into it. So we get a lot of interesting things to talk about. So uh, I had lots of folks writing into me recently, uh, asking about moving, like moving from out of state, uh, particularly South Carolina. So I don't know for some reason everyone in South Carolina is coming to Pennsylvania. That's great. We welcome you. So um, so moving in from out of state, they were asking about what was needed to do. And, and I don't know how many of you have transferred within state, like from school district to school district. And I know there, when you transfer within the state of Pennsylvania, you need to ask your superintendent to write you a, a letter of transfer 30 days before you move in. Um, that's within the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, so if you're homeschooling currently and you're going to be in this school district and you're going to be moving to this other school district, you do need to have a letter of transfer written by the superintendent. However, if you're moving in from out of state, everybody's laws are different. OK, so there's no need to do that because everybody's laws are different regarding homeschooling throughout the union. So uh, if you're coming in from out of state, you just come on in and file your paperwork with the school district and off you go. So uh, that was the first question regarding to that that I received. And then second, um, oh, I talked about that, the letter of, of transfer coming from within the state. So those are two situations uh, with moving and dealing with homeschooling in Pennsylvania. Third, we did have someone write in and ask about high school students uh, who are coming in from out of state. And, you know, we have requirements listed in our law. So those of you who may not know, in other states, uh, they don't have requirements listed in their homeschool law the way we do. So you know how, sorry, that's my finger across the screen. Here. So you know how we, how they list, you know, like you're supposed to cover English and math and science and whatever, and it, it, but it doesn't give you specifics about how long and how much and all the stuff, but it says you should cover these topics. Well, there's other states that don't do that type of thing at all. Um, so coming in from another state, they're like, wow, how do I know that my student has everything they need to graduate? And the thing is, with the Pennsylvania law, it does suggest those things, but it's up to the parent, the quantity, uh, the quality, and all those things. It is up to the parent to decide those things under the Pennsylvania law. So if you are coming in from out of state and you're concerned that your child has not hit all the requirements for Pennsylvania uh, law, you can have an evaluator look at their transcript from previous years and say, oh yeah, you covered this here and this here. Oh, look, you covered health there and you covered arts and humanities here and you know, yada, yada, and, and you're good to go. You don't need to do that. If you need that peace of mind, you can have an evaluator help you with that. But as a parent, you can take our law and read that that paragraph in the law that says at the secondary level you should cover and it says all those things you need to cover at some point in secondary uh, schooling and then the English and math and science and history. You can look at that, compare it to the transcript of your child for the past few years and say, oh, look, we cover this, we cover this, we cover this, we cover this. And honestly, coming into Pennsylvania, part of our law says you need to, to cover Pennsylvania state history like Pennsylvania history and U.S. history. Well, goodness gracious, it's like one and the same thing if you're studying the revolution or the Civil War, because so much has happened in Pennsylvania. So most kids in the whole union, I would hope, have had some Pennsylvania history because they've studied U.S. history now. Who knows these days what kids who are not being homeschooled are being taught. But um, if you're a homeschooler coming in from out of state, uh, you can check that off for yourself and just see. And, and again, I always say read the law and know it and know that it doesn't give you specifics. I do have another comment on that and a different question. So I'm not going to go any further on that question. So that was about checking requirements so that your child can graduate. If you're coming in from out of state and aren't sure, you can use an evaluator to help you out. But really, as, as a parent, you can just check the law and say, oh yeah, my child has had this, has this, had this. Okay, next question, number four. So uh, someone who's moving in was also asking about having art and music and PE. So they're like, we don't have a physical education requirement in our homeschool law. Like, what am I supposed to do for that? And this is just a reminder, and this is not just for those things like art and music that, that are 
I don't want to say add-ons, but they're, what, what is it? It's not even extracurricular, but it's not the core subjects. Um, just because they're in there and you are supposed to touch on it, it doesn't mean you have to have a full curriculum for it. So I do think like the PA law probably lists these things probably as an encouragement for parents to make sure the kids are well-rounded. Did you ever hear that term, well-rounded? When I was in school, I always heard the term well-rounded students. I don't, I don't know what that means, but um, I guess it means exposure to a lot of different things. So keep in mind, whether you're moving in from out of state or you're a PA homeschooler and the law just freaks you out because there's so much stuff in it, just because it's listed in the law that we're supposed to touch on these topics, it does not mean you have to purchase or use a full curriculum for all these things. You do not need to purchase a PE curriculum or an art curriculum or a music curriculum. If your kid takes music lessons, that's covering music. If your kid participates in a choir, sings at church, helps in the worship team, I don't know. That's, you know, those are music lessons. If you go to an art event downtown and there's an art studio and you go to some of their learn how to paint this or do this or, you know, art class at co-op or whatever, that counts for art. Or you just do a few crafty things at home. That counts for art. Uh, P.E., goodness, you can hike. You can bike. You can um, take walks in your neighborhood. You can play games in your backyard. You can be in community sports. You can be... At a, like we have a place called Spooky Nook Sports and they hold gym classes there for homeschoolers. You can go to that. But you don't have to have a full-fledged curriculum for these things. So when you're reading the law, take note. It doesn't say 180 day, this many minutes in order to complete this. It doesn't give you that kind of stuff. You do not need to have full curriculums for all these things. You know, you can learn a lot of stuff on taking trips, museum trips and other things. Uh, now, there are things, obviously, that you want to spend a lot more time in. You need to be able to function well mathematically to, to keep budgets, you know, make sure you're not getting ripped off. You need to be able to read well. You need to be able to write well, communicate well, speaking over the phone, those types of things. Obviously, you're going to want to spend a lot of time on those things so that your kids can function well in society. But even with those things, it doesn't say you have to use a particular curriculum and do a certain thing. You know, you're looking out for the well-being of your kids. You're going to make good choices. So anyway, use the free stuff. Use the library. You know, don't get concerned and worried about having full curriculums for every single thing that's listed in the law. Are you going to drive yourself crazy and, oh my goodness, exa to exhaustion, right? Okay, so that's that question. Number five, medical and dental, I just wanted to touch on. This is always a question that comes up. Uh, paperwork wise and when to do it. So paperwork wise, if you're using CHAPS affidavit and unsworn declaration, it attests in there that you are having the child's medical and dental care taken care of. There you go. That's the only statement that the school needs. They don't need any paperwork. Um, and people ask, well, do I have to have that done before I hand in the paperwork? You're like, does all my stuff have to be done in the summer? No, as long as you are getting your children you know, well checks and dental care done sometime during the course of the school year, you are fine. Now, when it comes to immunizations, that is a little bit different in the law. Uh, I did a, a, a video on this specifically. It does say in the law that the superintendents are supposed to make sure all kids are being vaccinated appropriately unless parents have signed an exemption letter. So that is, is in a different episode. Very recently, oh, 178, 179, somewhere around there, I talked about this at length, you can check out that episode. Um, so that paperwork, the school district does need to have about immunizations, but medical and dental, they do not, your paperwork attests, if it attests to it, that suffices. Uh, so for all these people who are moving, coming into the state, wanna know more about homeschooling, those are some of those basic things that we get lots of questions about. Uh, the next question I have um, was around whether or not CHAP has a graduation ceremony. So, uh, interestingly, we used to, at convention, have a graduation ceremony. Unfortunately, our coordinator moved on to other things, and we do not host one anymore. We haven't for about two or three, maybe even four years, maybe even a little while. Uh, that is a possibility if you would like to organize a graduation ceremony at our convention, which will be May 12th and 13th this year. Maybe you should write into me and check into that. We do have caps and gowns, but um, at this time we do not have a graduation ceremony. So if you are looking for one, I would say look for local co-ops, support groups, 
Uh, if you know other friends or people who have kids who are graduating, get together and create your own graduation ceremony. I know for our co-op, uh, the moms who have children who are graduating usually get together, plan it out, ask the input of the students, and lay it out however they want to, as fancy as they want or as non-fancy as they want. Some kids don't participate, some do. Just kind of do it the way you want to do it. Um, you know, it's like no holds barred. You can do what you want with graduation. Uh, it's really neat. And our... Um, at our ceremonies that we do, we have the parents stand up and say something about each kid because it's a smaller group and you can do that. You can't do that with hundreds of kids. So it's really special because you get to hear the parents uh, speak about their children and or young adults. And uh, the kids can stand up and talk too if they want to. Uh, so it's really cool. Uh, there's also other uh, umbrella organizations like we have one called Chalk which is like an umbrella organization over all the Lancaster area co-ops and they hold a graduation ceremony which is bigger because it involves a whole bunch of co-ops so um, you can look for organizations like that where you live if you're looking for a graduation okay in the next question we get a lot of questions come in about vendors for convention and what uh, who's gonna be there and and can I be a vendor and all that kind of stuff well if you are a vendor and you would like to be part of convention I can say and this is for anybody go out to conv.chaponline.com uh, that's conv.chaponline.com. That is our convention webpage. And it's not, oh, registration's not open yet for vendors or for attendees. So, but you can sign up for our e news to know when registration will be open if you would like to sign up to be considered to be a vendor. We did have someone write in and ask uh, if we're going to be limiting vendors again and uh, if it's going to be, you know, like, who's going to be there? Should I really sh sign up to come? Well, we never limit vendors. Uh, we want as many vendors to come as, as possible. The challenge is if it's on uh, another uh, convention date, like last year was during Virginia's. That was a challenge. We're really close to each other. Uh, that's not happening this year, which is great. Uh, another thing is if they don't, if they're on vacation or something happens in their family and they can't come to be a vendor, stuff like that happens. Maybe people don't go to conventions anymore. So we do never limit vendors and coming unless they cannot agree like to our statement of faith and what we stand for um but as far as we don't we don't say oh we're only going to have 50 vendors and we stop at that no we would like to have as many vendors as we can are there a lot of colleges yes there are a lot of colleges are we going to limit them no because they want to come and talk to people too and vendors vendors matter like you know we need we need as many people to come in as possible to share information with those coming to us so um that is what's going on with vendors, and we're hoping that we have a lot more people, a lot more people signing up. Some folks that used to be going to conventions just don't anymore. So that's a change, and that's challenging. But rest assured, we are trying to bring in as many as possible. And uh, if you don't want to sign up early because you don't think there's not going to be vendors that, that you want, you don't have to sign up at all. You can come unregistered to convention and walk in at the door and register there. That would be fine. But I encourage people to consider coming anyway, because when you support uh, CHAP in that way, we can continue to do this and grow the convention again and continue to bring these resources to people. So your support of CHAP is really important. So that brings me to uh, the final question of the day. I've got a lot of questions about membership this uh, month. And CHAP did have a membership. We are actually moving away from a membership to a partnership donation model for donations. And it's perfect when I'm talking about this today because it's Giving Tuesday. We've had our Black Friday and our Cyber Monday. And now it's Giving Tuesday. And I know you, some of you saw our post out there that Courtney put out there about uh, donating. You can just scroll down the feed a little bit and you will see that post. So Giving Tuesday is where we're at Um when you donate to CHAP, what you're doing is making it possible for us to continue to be here as a resource for you and for other homeschoolers. It enables us to continue doing convention and to consider doing other events like a Learning Dis Differences conference and marriage events and things like that. So uh, you can go to chapelonline.com uh, slash donate. That is our uh, link. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. I'm going to show it. There we go. So there's our Donate to Chap link that you can go to and check out. And uh, there's three options when you do that. So you can support us through the annual fund, and that is the fund that enables us to continue to have convention, to have other events 
um, you, and just do legislative work. You can also give to the scholarship fund, and that enables us to continue to give scholarships to graduating seniors every year at convention. And there's a grant through the Homeschool uh, the, uh, Chat Foundation. So the cool thing about the Chat Foundation is when you are a struggling homeschool family, something has happened to you, medical need, you had a fire, uh, lost a job, something where you're really struggling to continue your homeschooling financially, you can write into us and request a grant. And we can give you some money to help you continue on your homeschooling journey. So uh, that is a really awesome way to bless homeschool families so that they can continue to homeschool their children and, and train them in the way that God has asked them to train their children. So those are ways you can support us so that we can continue to support the homeschooling community. There's also ways to give support that's not monetary, and that's through time and talent. Time is very precious. Don't we all know it? And there, everyone has a talent. Everyone has a gift. And CHAP is always looking for volunteers, people who are willing to share their time and talent in order to promote the homeschool message throughout the state of Pennsylvania and beyond. So uh, specifically, we are looking for a registration coordinator for the convention. This involves, uh, obviously, the registration process. You know, it includes some IT stuff with the process of registering online and dealing with those things. Um, we're also looking for an e-news editor. So you, if you're signed up for our e-news, you get those little letters in your in your e inbox every Monday. Uh, we're looking for someone who would like to coordinate those things with articles and information. Uh, we're building a legislative team. Anyone who would like to lobby down in Harrisburg. Uh, or hold lobby days, those sorts of things. I've talked about that a few episodes ago, too. Uh, there's also other ways to volunteer at convention, and those are ways uh, that would just be a one, two, or three-day commitment if you're not looking to do a year-round commitment, uh, and those will come out with registration at convention. And we're also looking for mentors. Uh, we are building our mentor network, and if you go to chaponline.com resources slash resources, you will see the mentor menu. You can check that out, and you can sign up to be someone who can be there to support moms who really need uh, just a listening ear and an understanding friend to lend support in their homeschool journey. So <clears throat> these are all ways that are needed, special. And will certainly bless the homeschool community. So as you're considering where to give this Tuesday, consider chat. And if you'd like to give of time and talents, please write into us. You can comment below. You can write into us on our um, contact form on chatonline.com or message us here at Facebook. We would love to hear from you. Uh, those are all the questions I had for this month. If you do have other questions, please feel free to write into us. I love when I get those questions and I can help people out. And some of those things, like with moving in from out of state, I got to learn more about the law and how that functions, too. So I'm, I like that. You know, when I don't have the answers, I can learn them, too, and I can share them with you. So um, I hope you've had a great, wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you spent time to teach your kids about gratitude and be thankful. You know, I had a really good lesson that hit me on Sunday night about having gratitude. I'm in a little bit of a hard decision situation with some things in my life. And I'm like, what is the right choice? I just don't know which way to go here. And it hit me. We had a sermon about gratitude on Sunday too. And, and I was like, wow, I should really be thankful for this situation and thankful uh, for this person in particular who's trying to help me give me information through this decision-making process. And, and that was really good. That really helped my attitude. And uh, so I encourage you to keep showing your kids how to be grateful. Gratitude is so missing in our society. And I think truly, if we all learn to be more gracious and understanding and full of gratitude, man, it would change a lot of things. So hopefully all these things were helpful to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Next week, actually, I can't think of what the topic's going to be off the top of my head. It might be multi-generational learning, maybe. Hmm, that's an interesting interesting topic if you've never thought of it. So I hope you enjoy continuing to train your children to follow Christ in all of life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your shares. Thank you for your comments. And we will see you next week. Bye now.